Well, welcome, boys and girls. Welcome to J. Crew. Yes, this is J. Crew. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. We have come together to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Boys and girls, I pray that you have had a blessed good week during this pandemic. Look, um, boys and girls, it has been ups and downs, highs and lows. Many families have been impacted. You and school have been impacted. Just be safe, boys and girls. Follow the rules and do your very best to stay safe. Keep your mask on, social distancing when it's possible, and washing your hands. Amen? Amen. Boys and girls, over the last couple of weeks, I've been um, dropping a few little nuggets, nuggets of wisdom before we go into the message. And I want to do the same for today. Today, I want the, the nugget of wisdom that I want to drop to you drop on you. It's coming from Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 23. It says this, it says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Boys and girls, did you know that every decision that you make comes from your heart? Yes, every decision that you make is coming from your heart. So what the proverb is saying is that we need to put a gate in front of our heart so that we do not allow just any old thing to come into our heart because what goes into the heart gold comes out of the heart. Amen? Amen. Every decision that we make, every good decision that we make is based upon the source, the heart. Every bad decision that we make is based upon the source, the heart. So don't allow negativity to enter into your heart, boys and girls. Keep that gape up so that... boy. So boys and girls, when negativity comes, you close the gate. Don't open the gate and allow negativity into your world. Because when you do, then boys and girls, negativity in, guess what? Negativity out. Yes. So positive things in, positive things comes out. So boys and girls, we want you to make very good and wise decisions. And to make those wise decisions, you're going to have to help. And how you help is by putting up a guard against every negative thing that comes your way so that you can only allow those positive things in so that you can have positive responses to um, whatever actions that comes out, boys and girls. Boys and girls, it's so important that you make good and wise decisions, but every decision is coming from the heart. So if it's a whole lot of junk that you are allowing into your heart, junk in junk out. Yes, junk in, junk out. So bring those positive, productive things, spiritual things, the word of God, pour, fill your heart, saturate your heart with the word of God, so that when you get ready to make a decision, your decision is going to be based upon the word and the will of God, and not based upon the stuff that is out there in the dark world in which we live in. Amen? Amen. So that's the nugget for you, boys and girls, coming from Proverbs chapter, chapter 4 and verse 23, which says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Everything that we do flows from it. Amen? Amen. So we're going to guard our hearts. Amen? Yes, we are. We're going to put up that gate and boys and girls, when that negativity come, be it a negative friend or be it a negative word or whatnot, we're going to close the gate. Don't let it into your heart because if you enter into your heart, any negative things are going to come out. Boys and girls, when people put you down and say nasty things and ugly things about you, if you allow those things into your heart, guess what's going to happen? You're going to live those negative things out. Mm. We don't want to do that. We want people to build us up. We want to be around people that lifts us up. And those things that are in us, boys and girls, then guess what? We are going to do good things. We're going to do positive things. We're going to feel good about ourselves. And we are going to go forth and be all that God has called and purpose for us to be. Amen? Amen. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time that you have blessed us with, dear Lord, Dom, to just come and study another portion of your word. Bless the word, dear Lord. I pray that the word will go forth, dear Lord, and enter into the hearts and minds of these children as seed that is planted, dear heart, Lord, that will produce roots and bear much fruit. As the things of which they learn, dear Lord, they determine that they're going to put them into practice. Lord, we love you. We adore you. Blessed be your most holy name. Lord, we look forward to one day seeing you face to face in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, what a time that's going to be where there'll be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more disease, no more death. Oh, Lord, we'll be able to just celebrate and worship you always. 
In the meantime, dear Lord, I pray that you will give us the strength, fill us with your Holy Spirit, that our hearts and mind will be stayed upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so boys and girls, we're going to get ready to go into the message for today. So we're going to pause for a second and go into the message. Amen. Amen. Hi, kids. Welcome to J. Crew from our home to your home. Welcome. My name is Miss Viva. And I'm Gabby. Well, today we're going to have a great Bible study for you. Um, the lesson today is wonderful. The reason I want each of you to have a Bible is so that you can know that every lesson that we teach is also in the Bible. So go grab your Bible when you get a minute, and then we're going to go back when uh, the lesson's over, and then you're going to look up the Bible lesson, okay? Now, have you ever accidentally said something that goes against the Bible? Uh, who makes those mistakes? Sometimes you do, right, Gabby? Yeah, me too. We study the Bible because it tells us what is true about God and about ourselves. It is the best way to learn and how we can have eternal life with God through Jesus. Even though the Bible has many stories spread across the dozens of books, it's really all part of one big story. We have been working our way through the Bible to learn one big story that God is telling us. To help us understand how all the stories fit together and to focus our attention on some specific truth God wants us to believe, we use the big picture question. Who can tell me what our current big picture question is and tell me what we're talking about? Our big picture question is, what is worship? Worship is celebrating God's goodness, right? How many of you know God is great? There are tons of ways God is great. And there are tons of ways that we can worship him. Really, worship is much, much more than just things we do. It's a way to live. We can worship God in everything we do. And doing things in honor of God and showing him how wonderful, wonderful he is, is the most important thing that you could do. Don't you agree? Yeah. All right. For the last few weeks, we have been learning about God's people as they travel through the wilderness on their way toward the promised land. Now, God has rescued them from Egypt in a miraculous ways, in very miraculous ways, but the people still struggle to trust God. God wanted them to worship him. He provided for their physical needs, giving them bread, meat, water. He gave them the 10 commandments, to help them see what worshiping God was really about. Even so, they still disobeyed him. They failed to worship God, which wasn't good. That's where we pick up today. Moses had gone up to Mount Sinai to hear God's law, and the people made a really bad choice while he was gone. Let's hear more about it. Gabby's going to read it to us. The people worshiped a golden calf. Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. While God met with Moses, the Israelites at the bottom of the mountain were getting impatient. They began to wonder, where is Moses? What is taking him so long? Is he still alive? The Israelites went to Moses' brother, Aaron. Make, a, make us a God to lead us. They said, we don't know what happened to Moses. So Aaron collected gold from the people and made a statue of a calf that they could worship. God saw what the people were doing and he was angry. I will destroy these people, said God. Moses said, remember the great promise you made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You promised to give them as many offerings as there are in the sky, stars in the sky. You promised to bless them and give them land. So God did not destroy them. 
Moses went down to the mountain, down the mountain, carrying two stone tablets on which God had written laws. Moses got closer to the camp and saw that the people were dancing before the golden calf. He threw down the stone tablets, smashing them at the bottom of the mountain. He, then he destroyed the golden calf. The next day, Moses went back up the mountain to talk to God. These people sinned against you, he said. Please forgive their sin. Moses told, God told Moses to return to the people and lead them. When the time comes, I will punish them for their sin, God said. God sent a terrible sickness to the people because they had worshipped the golden calf. God continued to meet with Moses and give him laws and instructions. One morning, Moses went up the mountain to meet with God. God came down in the cloud. He said, the Lord is a compassionate and gracious God, but he will not leave the guilty unpunished. Moses bowed down and worshiped God. Lord, please go with us, he said. Forgive our sin and accept us as your people. Great, Gabby. Okay, so now that we've heard the lesson, what did you think about that? Often we hear about ways that the Israelites consistently fail to love God and worship him. That makes you feel a little frustrated, don't you think? Yeah. I almost wish I could yell at them and go back in time and say, what are you guys doing? Why are you trying to worship an idol? What, what are you doing? But it's important to point out that Moses was on the mountain speaking to God for 40 days. That suggests that the people had gone more than a month without really hearing from any, any hearing anything from God. When they went to Aaron asking for an idol, they were trying to find, I guess, someone to lead them. Don't you think? Yeah. They didn't trust God's timing, so they thought that they could make their own God um, and take his place, which wasn't very smart. They drifted away from God because they tried to fill God's place in their lives with something that wasn't God. Instead of asking the Israelites why they drifted away from God, hmm, why didn't they ask themselves, how, do, how long does it usually take for me to start drifting away from God when I don't read my Bible? Why don't we ask ourselves that? You know, when we don't read our Bible, when we don't go to church, huh, how long will it take you to start drifting away from God? Is it less than 40 days? Hmm, not, not sure, but everybody has their own timing. So that's why it's important to stay connected to God. We were created to worship him. And so our hearts, and are filled with worship. And the more that we get into the word and worship God, then that transcends over in our lives and into the lives of others that surround us. Like we said, what is worship? Worship is celebrating God's greatness. But sin has broken our hearts, right? Um, we often do things that are unpleasing, that's not pleasing to God. And that's because of sin. The Bible teaches us that our hearts are sick and that our heart can easily trick us. Only God deserves worship, but it is very easy to try to fit something or someone else in into that place, uh, the place where God is supposed to be. The only way to experience real lasting joy and peace is to worship who we were made to worship. And the only way we can really worship God is if our hearts are filled with God by the Holy Spirit in Jesus. Our sin keeps us from God, but Jesus made the way for us to be reunited, re, be reunited with them. Moses acted as the people's mediator, didn't he? Which was great. Standing for them before God. Moses could not do anything to make up for their sin, but we have a better mediator. We have Jesus and he's our mediator. Jesus paid for our sin on the cross and he stands for us before God. When we just trust in Jesus, 
our sins are forgiven. Do you think the Israelites really thought that the statutes could lead them? No, I think they were just hoping that God would hear them, but they weren't conscious of their actions and knowing that they were, they knew that they were worshiping an idol, but they thought that maybe God would hear them. Okay, good answer. I, I believe so too. And the more you stay connected to God, God hears you. He listens to your prayers and he answers your prayers. So it, the more we worship and the more we thank God and we thank him for all of the blessings, then the more he feels pleased with us, right? And we all want to please God, right? So God deserves our worship. And sometimes our heart, our sin fills our heart, but we should reject sin and try to become closer to God, right? So students, what we want you to do at home is to turn to your Bibles and go back to Exodus. And let's see, what were we on? First, Exodus 32, 34, and reread the story for yourselves. And that way you can become more connected to, this, to the Bible lesson and see what Moses did in order to turn us away from idols. And that way that we'll feel like we should not turn away from God and that we should worship him day in and day out. Well, that's our time, boys and girls. Thank you for joining us and hope to see you soon. We pray that you have a blessed week. Bye. Bye.